next up are my favorites of released games and I'm gonna add in games that are already playable so if there's a demo that I like there's gonna be one game like that don't be surprised that it's in this category because I've played it and it blowed my mind number 10 the curious expedition in particular the arctic expanse is the add-on we got in 2017 and it features art from Octavi Navarro so it's not that unexpected to find this game up there we're actually gonna hear about Octavi Navarro a little bit more as well as I said these are my own favorites so I really like these huge illustration styles I'm sure again there's gonna be other games that you would pick but for me kind of matters if I would want to go explore the game's world and The Curious Expedition definitely is one of those games that I really enjoyed playing just discovering new locations and seeing the art from there. Number 9 Songbringer Yes, I have had a lot of fun playing Songbringer this year as well. Such an atmospheric game, such a huge achievement for the developer Wizard Fu because he's pretty much learned pixel art for to make this game. He's done everything himself, code, music, he streamed the development. So big ups for releasing Songbringer. The game's atmosphere is just such a delight to return into while also being a little bit scary, spooky and weird and I just love it. Number 8, Tooth and Tail. This game has such a smooth style, I think mainly coming from the dynamic lighting engine, it has this kind of overlay of soft light, I don't even know how to explain it. The color palette is just gorgeous, the characters are very cute and nicely shaded, the buildings I think were done with 3D models being rendered, just a lot of these kind of smart approaches to making a beautiful game. Number 7, Galaxy of Pen and Paper. This is another one of those where I would just want to go explore the world, see what kind of planets there are, what kind of backgrounds they have. I had a lot of fun with it, maybe a little bit too grindy for my own taste in the end. If I had more time like I did when, back when I was playing Knights of Pen and Paper, I think I would enjoy it even more, but for the time that I spent in the game, I absolutely loved the environment. Number 6, Rivals of Ether. So this game has been around for a little bit longer, but in 2017 it came out from Early Access and is now fully released, got some DLC as well. The background art in this game is insane, the animations are also great. Everyone that's put their work into this game, there's many artists from the scene, they've done just such a wonderful work, makes it for a very enjoyable game to look at. Number 5 is Flint Hook. This was one of my most anticipated games because I just love the art style of games from Tribute Games. It's so smooth, it's not even anti alias but it still feels so smooth, I'm guessing from the color palette, it just feels like a warm hug for my eyes. I'm amazed at how much stuff they were able to put into these levels which to be honest are almost a little bit of constraint with their themes because everything just kind of happens in wooden airships, spaceships and despite that the art is just gorgeous all across the board from the backgrounds to the items to the enemies and animations such a smooth looking game, Flint Hook.
Number four is Nikra, and this one could have been higher up if it was an actual released full game. This is the demo that I was talking about. So much anticipation has gone into this game, so when I was actually able to play it, I was super excited and it did not disappoint at all. It's a short demo, it's not that long, but what it shows is just amazing enough for the fourth place on this list. The best part is that we've seen just a tiny part, I think one seventh of the game. Great art already and more and more and more great art in the future. Number 3, Tower 57. This was a huge debate in my head. Which one should get number 2 and number 3 because you're gonna see which one is number 2. Number 3, Tower 57 by CNG Mo. So the art is by CNG Mo. The developer is Pixwork with Benito Soup. The game is just so rich. Its environment are diverse. The artwork of CNG Mo is just perfect. There's not much you could say about it. He's been one of the artists that really tries to educate everyone else as well on these kind of best practices in terms of clusters. He really understands almost the science behind pixel art. So yeah, there you have it. Number three, Tower 57. And number two, now you're gonna see why this is for such a hard thing to choose, is The Mummy Demastered. And it's because this one also has CNG Mo's art, in particular just the backgrounds are done by him. There's other artists on character art and items and probably something else. And it was such a hard choice because I love the Tower 57 has a lot of diversity to it, whereas the Mummy the Masters kind of happens a lot underground and in the caves and this kind of environment. However, some of the places that you walk into are just absolutely stunning. Just take your breath away, which I rarely felt with Tower 57 because Tower 57 is a top-down game and Honestly, that rarely happens to me in those games, whereas the Mummy the Masters is side view with perspective backgrounds and CNG mode just delivers on that note. His art is so technically correct. Honestly, I could put some of his backgrounds as top illustrations, but I didn't want to because I knew that I was gonna feature them here and it's in such a high spot. Number two, the Mummy the Mastered. I don't even like platformer shooter games, but I could just go into this game just to look at his art every 10 minutes to see one of those big backgrounds. And that's why it's so high up on my list. And now for the top game of 2017 in my list is Timbleweed Park. Hello all, thank you for coming to this very important informational meeting. First, I have to ask, any feds here? Yes, yes, yes. This was not a hard choice for me at all. I am in love with this game. I've been in love with it for a long time. It was such a delight just following the development, development blog, because it's developed by some of the genre's greatest people that pretty much set how this whole genre is played at. Of course I'm talking about Ron Gilbert and Gary Winnick and David Fox who have worked on Maniac Mansion so this is their baby and not only that since in this top list I pretty much rank games by their art not their gameplay if this was a list by gameplay it would also win in my eyes however it also definitely wins it by art because well the backgrounds are done by the legendary Mark Ferrari then art is by Gary Winnick and animations from Octavio Navarro. So here he is, Octavio Navarro again. But really, the person who steals the show is, yeah, Mark Ferrari. 
I watched his game development talks on how he made art for this game. Such a nice mix of the 90s mentality brought into 21st century, something he calls 8-bitish art. It's kind of reminiscent of those days, but it's kind of like that. Multiply it by your imagination as a kid, whereas you actually thought the games looked better than they actually did. There's so many different environments, so many different locations. It has so much art, so much great art to look at. Easy, easy win of 2017. The most beautiful pixel art game is Timbleweed Park. Holy! This can't be! I thought the playable characters couldn't die in adventure games. Now, similarly to before, it's super hard to pick a top 10. So here are five more honorable mentions. I'll quickly go through them. Dead Cells has really nice environments, very cool dynamic shading system, smooth animations that are rendered 3D into pixel art. Next one is Don't Sing, a recent edition, a game that actually failed on Kickstarter because it had programmer art and then the developer joined forces with the artist 13 and he just created this wonderful, wonderful aesthetic for it. Makes pirates look like a little nice friendly theme park. Narco, I really wanted to push this game up further because it has such a unique art style but in the end it's gonna go in honorable mentions yeah it's just something unlike any of the other games that have this kind of polished pixel art style this one is quite raw and with this unique dithering scanline aesthetic uh, very psychedelic colors now here's an odd one out of the bunch, it's Rain World, which isn't exactly pixel art as much as aliased graphic. So it's rendered in 3D, it has these huge illustrations, but it just, because of the sharp edges, it just is reminiscent of pixel art. And so I like it just as much as the other games. Plus the animation is so super, super smooth for the main characters and the environments, just the whole aesthetic of the game is breathtaking. So definitely an honorable mention, even though it's not higher because it's not quite pixel art as we usually think about it. All units, today is the day we fight the ocean fleet in the open space. Our only chance is to destroy the Walker. And last but not least of honorable mention, Super High Dora. Old school shoot 'em up that looks just as great as we would have hoped for for a 16-bit era game. Locomolito definitely delivers on his promise of a great game. So yeah, that's your honorable mentions for released games. <laughs>